Welcome back. What used to be nobody's business has suddenly become everybody's business, thanks to the Internet. Everything from our reading habits to our shopping habits are suddenly being tracked and shared. Does society have a newfound willingness to be transparent online? Jean Lee caught up with Bambi Francisco to make some net sense of our new attitudes and find out what the implications are for our future. Bambi, in your latest NetSense commentary, you take the position that the only way to get good service on the Internet these days is to actually give up your privacy. Do you think, then, that people are actually more transparent on the web these days? Being transparent, they're practically naked on the web. Now, I take a look at the number of services out there that give people the option to be private, and what I found is that the majority of people opt to have their photos, videos, and profiles available to the public. One example is LiveJournal. It has 10 million users who have online journals, and 70% of those journals are public. There's also Facebook. That's that popular site for college students. 7 million registered users, and 83% of those who use Facebook opted to keep their profiles open to those in their colleges. So Bambi, does more people hopping onto the internet then mean that people actually value their privacy less? I really think it means that people are getting more value by offering up something that was once perceived to be private. For instance, the more information you share about yourself, the more likely you'll find people with the same interests, and they can help you find whatever it is you're looking for. What types of information, Bambi, are people giving away very freely uh, these days that they might not have done 10 years ago? Well, in my case, there's news. I wouldn't have shared you know, what I was reading 10 years ago, but today I allow Google to ser search and store the news I read, so now I can get news recommended to me based on my history. I also allow Amazon to keep track of all the books I've read and bought. In this way, they, Amazon recommends books to me based on my history. You can really go down the list. There's a, a new site called Pandora.com, and if you offer up your favorite musicians, Pandora will Will create a customized or personal channel based on your preferences. Bambi, there are things called cookies, and we're not talking about uh, you know the the kind in the cookie jar, but cookies and some other ways that that companies are are tracking people these days. Tell us about that. Right, you should everyone should assume that every site you visit tracks and stores the computer's IP address as well as the type of browser you're using and the pages you're visiting. And most sites also use cookies, as you mentioned, to track user names and IDs. And the reason they do that actually is so you don't have to sign in every time you go to that site. But just keep this in mind, most sites will allow you to delete the cookies and you can still uh, you know, operate in that site. So really those cookies are optional. Should there be safeguards against um, you know, protecting your information on the Internet and, and being tracked so carefully? The best protection for anyone is really use common sense. Don't create a video. Don't create a blog that's saying that maybe you're leaving out, of, leaving town. Don't track your child's early years for everyone to, to see. And accept that whatever you do online, whatever you offer up, pictures, blog posts, videos, that information is being stored somewhere. So I think people will one day question why they put certain pictures and events on the web. So you have to keep in mind that those pictures and files and blogs will be stored somewhere and they can't be deleted. And that does it for this edition of Market Watch Weekend. Next time, why more and more brides are letting photographers capture their most intimate moments. I'm Alexis Christophorus. Have a great week, and until next time, we'll see you on the World Wide Web.